What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the HQ. I am Nicholas. I am joined, as always, on Thursdays with Dr. Jesse Morse of the Fantasy Doctors to break down all of the relevant fantasy football injuries for your squad. It is Thanksgiving, so happy Thanksgiving to y'all. You know what? Like, we just keep seeing new players pop up left and right. Like, as we're sitting here bullshitting before we do the videos, there's always, like, three random guys who just – we get, like, sleeper notifications pop up. Like, oh, he pulled the hamstring. He's on the injury report. It's getting to the point where the list of injured players is so long that I'm about to just tell you all, like, don't worry about injuries. Just enjoy your Thanksgiving and your football season is over. I don't – you could still hear me fine, right? Like, that mic is not picking anything up. You're good. I think it's coming to the AirPods, so I don't know how that – how the – uh the audio is going to be, but we're going to try this out. So I apologize if it's a little shitty audience. Uh, welcome back to the channel, Dr. Morris. I know you got a busy day ahead of you. Uh, you want to hit the gym. You want to get some of these AirPods. So um, we won't take too long. Hopefully we could dive through these 58 players on the list. Um, but welcome. Welcome back. Thank you for having me. Every important player on every team is injured. Let's just, let's just start off with that. Nobody is safe. There's nothing no. to be thankful for this year. But speaking of Thanksgiving, there are always a few football games being played on a Thursday, which is, you know, what most Thanksgivings in America revolve around. So let's start with the games on Thursday, uh, first of which is the Detroit versus Chicago Bears. I believe the only real notable injury for fantasy purposes is Jeff, Jeff Driscoll, who has been, um, I don't want to say a savior, but he's been absolutely usable in like two out of the three weeks. But mm -hmm. it's because of his legs. Now, mm -hmm. they came out and said that his hamstring is – very sore, which means that uh, there is no shot that I am playing basically any lion, nor am I taking any bets on the lion side, or am I playing Jeff Driscoll with any sort of confidence. The only reason that offense can even slightly move is because he's adding 50 to 60 extra rushing yards per game. So this hamstring basically puts him completely off the streaming radar, correct? Yeah, I agree. I mean, even if this is super mild, like all it takes is one run and he tweaks it and he's going to be miserable. Yeah. I mean, he, so, if he can still stay in the pocket and throw, okay, but that's not really what you're using him for. I mean, he's there, but, I mean, you're using for his legs. That's where he gets you your added bonus. Yeah, so, so Jeff uh, Fiscal, not a good situation there. It hurts all the pass catchers, too. I mean, I don't even know at this point who they have behind him. Matt Stafford looks like he's out for the foreseeable future, but I would uh, – Stay away from Detroit. The under in that game, me and two of my friends were talking about it yesterday, how we were going to hammer the under. It started at like 40, and now it's all the way down to like 37, and it just keeps going lower and lower and lower. It's like I don't even know what to do at this point because, I mean, if you're an NFL team, you should be able to combine to hit 37 points, but I'm not even <laughs> confident that that's going to happen. You know, Lamar did that in the first half. Exactly. Lamar Jackson by himself can take a team one on 11 and put up 37 points. Uh, so let's stick within the, the Thanksgiving games. I believe we could probably skip over the middle of the Bills and the Cowboys. I don't think there's anyone of no, maybe Amari Cooper, but I mean, mm. like we've talked about Amari Cooper and it's nothing new that he's dealing with. I think it's just added coverage from the defensive teams as well as just the same, you know, lower leg injuries that he's been dealing with all yep. year. Are you sensing anything from his play that, like, tells you that he's more injured now than he was earlier on in the year? I mean, uh, nothing in particular. I mean, last week he was just shut down uh, by yeah. Gilmore. I mean, legit shut down. This week is no easier. He's got Tredavious White, who's legit, too. Not quite as, as monstrous as, as Gilmore, but uh, I don't see anything. But I also didn't expect much out of him. So I, I expect Gallup to – so Cooper may have a decent game. I think Gallup is, is probably the play here. No, not yeah. Cooper, regardless of Cooper's knee. The middle game, not too much uh, of an injury list here. We can hop to the night game, which should be a fun one um, on paper. Probably won't be. I'm sure the Saints will sweep the floor of Atlanta after we actually did that to them a couple weeks ago. I don't know where that came from, and I highly doubt we'll see anything like it again. But on the Falcons side of things, we got Julio Jones. Um, now, he injured his shoulder last week. I believe he missed some time and then didn't finish the game. He did Correct. not practice on Monday. He was not spotted at the open portion of practice on Tuesday. Since they play on Thursday night, that obviously doesn't give him a lot of time to recover from it. So he's questionable. Given what we know about the injury, like you can't feel great about Julio right now, right? I think he plays. I don't know how confident you feel in him. Mm -hmm. As long as it's not, it's not his foot, I'm, I'm not really worried. He okay. had his, his issue is predominantly feet. So he's kept that in check. He hasn't been a monster this year. I mean, he's been good, but he hasn't been like what we – hoped he would be I, I he was kind of disappointing last week I mean the shoulder probably had a lot to do with it in my opinion but um I, I just think that he disappointed everyone um and and I think the shoulder is going to irritate people I, we don't know if it's I'm assuming it's probably a shoulder sprain if I were to guess I didn't see what play it happened on um there's a couple other possibilities but we don't I, we just don't know so at this point um if you have them you kind of have to play them I mean 
there's not many there's not many people that have his upside. Um, yeah, and it's, we don't know if Marshawn Lattimore is playing or not. If he does miss it, and you know Julio and Calvin Ridley should both be in store for some pretty big games. But I guess yeah, you're right. If you have Julio, you kind of have to play him regardless of whether or not you think he's a hundred percent. As far as the other two Falcons that are banged up. Devonta Freeman looks like he's back, actually. Yeah, Devonta Freeman will be was practicing in full, so I kind of just assumed that yeah. he will. And be. then, uh, and then Hooper's probably going to be out. He's definitely out this week, maybe next week. But at what point do they just say to shut it down? Yeah, we'll have to see. With Devonta Freeman, assuming he's given himself enough rest that if he plays tonight, we're confident. Not, I mean, confident in the sense that, like health wise, we feel good about. It. No, we don't. I. I He's one of the guys that I just feel like he's going to get injured again. Yeah. That's why I faded him this year because I'm like, he's just not a spring chicken anymore. This is like Le'Veon Bell saying he's going to play every snap of every down and be healthy. It's like, we yeah. know he's got I mean, he's good when he's on the field, but he gets injured. This is just what happens. So I want Devonta to stay healthy. I just don't feel confident that he's going to. If you have him, you kind of have to play him at least as a flex spot so to speak. Yeah, that's probably where he I fits in. Confident. I mean, just given just given what we've seen from the other running backs while he's been out, like they haven't really done anything. So it's yeah. like Freeman, you know, it doesn't seem like he's probably lost any of the stranglehold on the starting job there in Atlanta, which is... No, he's, um, yeah, he's still the guy if he's healthy when he's on the field. So, I mean, I think he's going to go. It takes one funny misstep that he's going to re-injure it. So don't be surprised if he re-injures it mid-game. Um, it's very possible. Um, but but he, he gave it a, a couple of weeks, so he got lucky and it wasn't a significant sprain, but I don't feel very confident in him right now. He needs to show yeah, me I'm, he can stay healthy. I'm trying to pull up my rankings. I have him around RB... 30 to 32 in that range. So, you know, like yeah. a flex RB3. I'm not very confident in him whatsoever. Uh, for the Eagles, so we have Carson Wentz dealing with his hand injury. You said that he uh, – there was reports that he practiced in full, so we're not really too worried about that. But the rest of the offense is, uh, you know, hurting. We have Alshon Jeffrey, who's missed the last couple of games, but he was back at practice practicing in full. I'm, I mean, he's no, like you said, spring chicken either. So I'm not really excited to get him right back into my lineup just given the fact that um, this this – Offense has not been moving well, but they are playing in Miami, so maybe we'll see a little bit of pop. The other two guys, we've had Jordan Howard miss a couple of weeks too and does not really seem like he's that close to returning. And mm-hmm. we also have Zach Ertz who just literally popped up on a sleeper notification. Yes, like 10 minutes ago, he did not practice today with a hamstring strain, and that's the last thing you want to hear because Zach Ertz has been in on an absolute tear. He's like 30 receptions over the last three games, 90-plus yards in all games, uh, two Order. touchdowns. Yeah, Goddard could be an absolute huge uh, pickup for those of y'all that are going to need to find a, a backup tight end if Ertz misses time. But, like, I mean, we don't really know anything about Zach Ertz's injury. I mean, it could have just been a tiny tweak, and they're just like, yeah, you know what, we don't want to push it. So, yeah. yeah, we'll have to see. I mean, uh, any thoughts on all of the Eagles players? We have Carson Wentz in full and then maybe um, Howard and, and Jeffrey. So Matthews is gone, I guess. So they, they're they going to bump yeah. up Jay Jaw. I haven't been Jay Jaw. Yeah, you I sound I, tired over there. I I, uh, I just haven't been a big fan of Wentz and what he can do this year. Like, I just – I don't – if you saw that pass last week to Miles Sanders, did yeah. you see it? Yeah. Wentz oh, it was like, like 50 feet above his head, and there was no one near him. I was like, what in the hell is this? So, Howard's not back this week, no. Whatever's going on, it's in his neck, and it's not better. So, he – He's not back. Miles okay. Sanders, Jay Ajayi, I think Elshon's fine. Aguilar's banged up with an E, but he'll probably play. And then Goder and maybe Goddard, however you want to pronounce it. And then Ertz, uh, it's kind of probably a game-time decision. It's so and, shitty. I, I'm, I'd be really confident in Miles Sanders. He's seeing a lot of touches and a lot of work through the he air. He hasn't gone Howard out. yet. I need him to go nuclear. Like I'm. Yeah, I'm, he hasn't had that game yet. I, I, this could definitely be it, though, against Miami. Right I mean, there. They're lighting it's up a right shit ton there. of points. Yeah, so I think this is – I mean, if there's ever going to be a week to do it, it's going to be – Miles Sanders, Thanksgiving week. He's about to eat. He's about to feast. Mm. So get Miles Sanders in your lineups. Um, the other two, I mean, what would you consider Alshon Jeffrey right now? Like a low-end flex play probably, right? Even yeah, in this I mean, matchup. Against the Dolphins, maybe it's a little bit better. But um, I guess the good news is that once his hand is okay, that he wasn't even on the practice report today. So uh, they're confident that this was not serious. They should win. But at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised if like Miami did some craziness and won. Yeah, it's the fucking NFL. You never know. All it's right, we'll stick in with uh, Eagles. Oh, God, the Eagles have been so bad. So bad. It makes no sense because all the pieces that they have together should work flawlessly, but they just don't, and that 
for you is what the NFL and fantasy football is all about. Let's, let's, let's keep with the hamstrings. We have a lot of players on the hamstrings. Uh, you know, we have Derek Henry tweaked his hamstring today or yesterday or something. Chase Edmonds coming back from a hamstring injury. We have Tyree Kill also coming off the bye with his hamstring injury. Adam Thielen supposedly did not practice again today because he retweaked his hamstring uh, or something. DJ Chark, yeah. some kind of hamstring injury. Uh, it's getting fucking disgusting out here, man. Everyone's it's just weird. Hand. It's, it's freaking week 13. These people should not be injuring their hamstrings. Yeah, so tell me, tell me your concern level as we go down these guys' uh, names. Derek Henry. Mild since it happened on a Wednesday that we know of. Okay. Yes. Um, Chase Edmonds coming back. Not concerned. Okay. Uh, Adam Thielen. Partially concerned because they gave him like three or four weeks off and he just retweaked it. Yeah, I'd, I'm actually – I'd be very concerned if I owned him in re, uh, redraft league right now. Uh, Tyree Kill coming off the bye. Game time decision. Okay. Are you gonna, you're going to play him if he's active. Yeah, because you can't play him next week. Or you, it's bold to play him next week. You have to play him next week. He's Gilmore. matchup proof. Doesn't matter. Terry Kills is doesn't doesn't matter, Doc. It's Terry Kill. Stop saying Gilmore at me. Terry Kill is is matchup proof. It doesn't okay. matter who he's going up against. Mark okay. my words. Terry Terry Kill five for a hundred and and a touchdown against. Did you Patriots. see what Cooper did last week? Yeah, Cooper ain't Terry Kill though. Cooper ain't Terry Kill. Put those hands down. Let's talk about uh, <laughs> DJ Chark. I don't even know what happened to DJ Chark, but I just know he, he has some kind of fine last week. He'll be fine this week. I'm not worried about him. Okay. This was, okay. This was something that already happened. All right. Yeah. yeah well, last week. we're just jumping all over the place, but James Conner seems like he's going to miss more time. I mean, he's been, oh, he's almost. I mean, he's week to week, but it's almost like month to month at this point. And Benny Snell came in at 21 carries. So um, James Conner. I mean, if you had to predict, like, when do you think he'll be coming back to game action this year? I I tweeted this out earlier today. They are six and five. He needs mm-hmm. at least one to two more games. If they are six. In seven, he shuts it down and has surgery. You think so? He, there was a rumbling where yesterday, whatever day it was, I get so many notifications, I can't keep track, that he needs surgery. So that means he has a grade three AC sprain. Um, half of those heal on their own and half end up needing surgery. He may maybe the half that ends up needing surgery. Either that or he had a four and he just didn't listen to surgical advice. That's the other option. If it was a two, he didn't, it, it will heal. He doesn't need surgery. And the fact that he came back, retweaked it, likely means it's a three. There's, if they're, since they're still in the playoff hunt, I can see them kind of seeing if he can get healthy. But if once he's out of the playoff hunt and they're out of the playoff hunt and they really don't have much of a chance, I think he just has it and, and moves on. That's so um, shitty. He was having such a good year. Oh, I know. And then that I, was, I, I mean, that I, was one I, of my I'm concerns. I'm happy about it. It seemed like he was he was a guy that I was kind of fading going into the season because I I mean one of my concerns was that he never finishes the year he, he's continuously hurt and you know now it came to fruition unfortunately so you have to keep a, a strong eye on what happens with the team overall because obviously as Doc says you know serious consideration to shut him down if something does happen now the Kansas City backfield we have literally it's just ghosts when it comes to Damian Williams have you heard anything about the ribs popped up two seconds ago no. Practice today with a rib injury. Okay, so that's not good. Considering that we haven't heard anything at all for a long time, and then all of a sudden he just pops up with a no practice. That's that's pessimistic for. Okay, so, so we're uh, we're probably going to guess that he doesn't play this week. No, I'd be if you're not practicing like zero practice on Wednesday, and you've already had ten days to heal. Yeah, you like, need to be at least limited there. They have such a good matchup too. They're playing at home against the Raiders, fifty-two point over under. 10 point favorites. It looks like a blow up spot for everybody not named Damian Williams, which gives us uh, some confidence in the Sean McCoy. I like Darrell Williams. Maybe a little, maybe a little Darrell. Play. Yeah. A little Darrell action. Cause he gets involved in the past. When is I mean, Darwin going to happen? Uh, maybe in 2021. 2020. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. So Damian Williams, not on the right side of things. Matt Breda, he finally, I believe returned to a limited practice today. So hopefully he should get back on the field. Right. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think they, I, I, they were finally smart with him this year, or he was finally accepting to be smart. I think this one was just like so much pain that Matt Brady was just like, look, I can't play through this. And Good. They finally sat him down. I'm Good. just like, I'm not confident throwing him back into my lineup, though. No, 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 no. I, I, it's terrible. I can't. I mean, I, I like his upside, but his floor is just non existent. Mm hmm. All right, um, let's move back over to the wide receivers. Now, we have T.Y. Hilton. He returned from his calf strain last week, did not play a full complement of snaps, 
And now he's saying that like he couldn't find his footing and, and I, I think the calf again. So this is not a good situation for T.Y. Mm-hmm. Hilton. He's someone that I'm probably he played in 25 snaps, which was fourth among wide receivers behind Pascal, Marcus Johnson, uh, Chester Rogers. So they play the Titans this week and the Titans are a tough relative defense overall. So like T.Y. Hilton, I, we, he's going to be a game time decision, I'm, I'm assuming. And he's probably someone I'm not even going to put in my lineup regardless of if he does play. Before last week's game, I said there was a 50% chance he would re-injure himself because he was coming back a little week or two earlier mm-hmm. than he should have. Guess what happened? That's why they pay you the big bucks. Uh, this, is the, this, <laughs> this is the issue with calves. They just don't heal quickly. They suck. They do. Calves and groins, they just do, they don't heal well or fast. Three weeks wasn't enough. And now if he goes, he's going to tweak it again. He needs to sit out this week. If they're serious about playoffs and they need him for playoffs, he has to sit out this week. I mean, such a shame. They have is. a great match. They have a, they have a great end of season schedule too. After then, uh, Ebron's friggin' on the IR too, with both ankles. What the hell that happened? But yeah, Jack Doyle could be in for a monster day without yeah. Ebron if Ty Hilton does not. And play. Mac is so, out. Mac is yeah, dude. This is this is actually crazy. The fact that they're even like in somewhat playoff contention with all these injuries and I mean six and five, it's pretty damn good for a team that's dealt with this much adversity with the whole luck thing here. So uh, move down the wide receiver list. We have Juju. So Juju is out of the protocol, Mm -hmm. but he still is not practicing, which tells you that his knee is not fully healed either. Um, What are we thinking about Juju? Like, is there any chance similar to James Conner where they just eventually shut him down? Or do you think this injury is really just not that serious where they need to do that? I'm happy that the independent neurologist cleared Juju. That means that he is officially graduated from the concussion protocol. The problem is we don't know the extent of his knee injury because it, he couldn't truly practice because of the head injuries. Now we have to kind of figure out where he is with the knee. And we don't really have details on it. Is this an MCL sprain? Did he tweak his meniscus? What, what did he do? I just don't have much faith in the duck. I, I don't, I mean, maybe he's better than Rudolph, but I, I just, I don't know. It's, it's a I rotation mean, at this I point of guys understand. who are going to blow up. What's that? I said that the Steelers wide receiver core is, is like the Patriots backfield. It's like you never, ever know what's going to happen there. Like one week it's him, the next week it's another guy. So you can't really, even if Juju's on the field, like he hasn't shown that like alpha dog mentality where it's like no matter who the quarterback is, he is, he is the elite He's guy so there. Bad. Yeah, it's crazy, man. I was, I was talking about it, um, him uh, in a dynasty standpoint yesterday with one of my friends and like I don't even really know what to make of it obviously he's super super young so you're not like too worried about it but like you would like to have seen him at least show some of the elite status that he had the year before without Antonio Brown here even if there were backup quarterbacks on the field so where do you think Juju is for PPR league in terms of ranking like for this week football in it total where, where, where is he at? I would have to assume he's in like the 50s or around there. 45. 45. That's, po- that's points per game or just overall for the year? No, no, no. This is, year. This is for, for the whole year. Okay. Full PPR. His yeah. highest game of the year, five receptions for 103 yards and one touchdown. Yeah, that was the one. That was against Miami, right? Miami. 21.3 yeah, I rem- points. I remember that. That was like his one big game, and then it was, it's been fucking nothing besides that. So. The four games around that, 1.7. 4.6, 7.4, 4.1. Yikes. Really, bro? I'm over Juju. I don't own him in any of my redraft leagues, thankfully, even though he was someone that I really liked going into the year. But uh, unfortunate for those of y'all that drafted him, Debo Samuel, Emmanuel Sanders, seems like, I mean, Debo Samuel's fine, but it seems like Emmanuel Sanders is trending in the right direction. He hasn't done much production-wise, but we've seen his snaps go up 30% to 47% to 67% most recently in week 12. Um, So he's getting back on the field more and more. But like we said, I mean, this rib injury is something that he's going to have to deal with, you know, in terms of pain tolerance, Mm -hmm. maybe for the remainder of the year, but it, you know, it's clearly showing that he's getting a little bit better. So in terms of like confidence level, he's going to play, he's going to be out there. He's going to tough it, um, but he's got a very tough matchup against the Baltimore Ravens, which I'm assuming Marlon Humphrey is probably going to end up shadowing Emmanuel Sanders. So how much do you think the rib injury is still impacting him from like a pain tolerance? I know it's still going to be there, but in terms of like production, is it, you think it's really still taking away a lot of his production? Yeah, it's hurting him a little bit. Um, With each week, he's getting less pain and more mobility, Mm -hmm. but um, he still needs another week or two before he's probably hundred percent. Remember like that's assuming he doesn't, play or re-injure it so it's like he could take two steps forward and one step back with every week he plays because yeah he he takes a shot you know or whatever it's not an ideal 
perfectly beautiful timeline. It's uh, it, it goes up and down, up and because that's what happens when he takes he plays in a game. Mm -hmm. um, so he he needs another week or two before he's one hundred percent. He'll be better. He'll play play more snaps, but I don't know if he'll it'll translate to a better box score. Yeah, I think I think the matchup there too is just something not to go unnoticed because Baltimore's defense has been so good lately. Let's talk about another team that's been very good all year. And that's the Patriots. And they've got their whole entire wide receiver core pretty much banged up right now. We have Muhammad Sanu with the high ankle sprain. We have Phil Brissett dealing with a concussion who is still not clear protocol. So do we expect either of these guys to suit up for week 13? Yeah, I think uh, – well, Brissett will be back. Um, Edelman's still in there with the shoulder, but I'm not worried. Sanu, I think he's more of a – I think we'll come back for the Chiefs game. I, don't, I think he's yeah. out this week. I agree. Um, so with that being said, I mean, if, if Philip Dorsett, you think Philip Dorsett is back, you're saying? Yeah, like I think he, he, he took a little bit longer to clear the protocol, but I think it'll be fine. Okay, so Philip Dorsett will slot back in with Julian Edelman, and then we'll see a mixture of probably Nikhil Harry and Jacoby Myers on the outside. Nothing really to get excited about from a redraft standpoint. Now, the one guy that I think is worth noting is Tyler Lockett, dealing with that, you know, that calf contusion or whatever. Mm -hmm. and he went to the hospital a few weeks ago. They had their bye. He came out of the bye and didn't miss any time he played, but he did not play well, or that entire passing offense didn't play well. So let me ask you, do you think that it was just more of a product of, you know, the game flow and Russell Wilson not having a big game, or do you think, like, the two were interlocked? Because Tyler Lockett played on 86% of the snaps um, in this one, so he was still his normal full-time receiver. Do you think the injury – uh, played into his down production at all. Yeah, he might not have been able to get as much separation. Okay. It's hard. I didn't get to watch that game. Uh, so I don't. it's hard to tell. But my suspicion is it was a combination of the two. Um, but I think that he has the potential to be in his normal self this week. Okay. that's Yeah, that's good news because I need him back. And last week was, was not a welcome sight. But that's in the past. And he'll probably be close to 100% now going into this game. And Russell Wilson will bounce back as always. Golden Tate entered the concussion protocol. So Golden Tate actually – so he got hit. Uh, they checked him for a concussion during the game. They put him back out on the field. And then the following day on Monday, they said he's in the concussion protocol. So yeah. I don't believe he – yeah, he didn't practice today. So Golden Tate's been so good this year for fantasy. He's averaging, I think, like 15.5 points per game. If he ends up missing this game, then I think Sterling Shepard becomes a very interesting play because he has not been able to produce really this year. Mm -hmm. But Shepard actually led the team with nine targets last week. I don't think a lot of people know that. He came back, nine targets. He only caught five of them for like 15 yards. So a fucking ugly, ugly day efficiency-wise. Yeah. But the volume is there. And, uh, you know, on the outside, you have Darius Slayton kind of breaking out. But the Packers are very good against outside wide receivers. Not so good at covering the middle and covering the slot wide receivers. So Shepard would come in, play the slot if Tate misses time. I think Evan Ingram's very likely to be out again. So I think Shepard could be in for a very, very, very big day if he's sitting on one of your guys. Ingram's not back yet. So you can no. throw him out. Saquon hasn't looked right. No. Something's going on with Saquon. I just don't know what it is. Maybe it's a second-year block. Whatever it is, I just – it doesn't look right. It's so definitely that basically, with, with Tate, a little – likely to miss maybe i mean it's it's 50-50 it's at this point it's friday we'll know more and i don't know about red ellison either but he is but he is um so basically talking <laughs> yeah. about shepherd saquon if they decide to throw to him or slayton i mean you're right you're starting to run out of people here so i think uh yeah shepherd will be in a big day just because i mean literally no one's doing anything um Mike i think Blake that's really up, up with a knee by the way who cares? If you're starting Mike Williams, you're not in your fantasy playoffs anyways at this point. Let's talk about some tight ends. Let's talk about <laughs> – actually, I don't even – like, I mean, what's there to talk about a tight end? We have Zach Ertz, like we said. Go grab Goddard if you have Ertz. Um, Austin Hooper is going to be out again this week. They might possibly shut him down if he continues to rehab this slowly. Evan Ingram, you're saying, is very likely going to be out again with this foot injury. Gerald Everett popped up with a knee injury. Um, mm -hmm. So, so Gerald, Gerald Everett is someone I think worth talking about because – he finally, like, he, he was in the midst of kind of a breakout year, um, and then Jared Goff kind of happened, and this whole entire passing offense kind of happened. And all of a sudden, we saw his snaps dip. He played a season low 25% of the snaps in week 11. He hasn't played less than 40% since week one. Um, and now they get the Arizona Cardinals, which obviously is just uh, they donate points to opposing tight ends in fantasy. So this becomes kind of interesting if Gerald Everett's injury is considered serious. What do you know about what he's dealing with? He didn't look right last week. Yeah, he didn't. I mean, that's, that's, that's got to be why he didn't play much. Higby was targeted a ton, and he's not really much of a receiving tight end, if I remember correctly. 
No, he's not. I wouldn't be surprised if Higley went bananas this week. And I don't I, I just I don't I'm not, I feel like he's just not a good enough tight end for me to just use the Arizona narrative to push him there. You know? He's not. But somebody is gonna win a lot of money if if he goes off. Because some jackass will play him and it'll it will work. Probably. But I, I wouldn't be su- I mean, you gotta remember that Everett is dealing with wrist, shoulder, ankle, and now knee. It's like pick a body part here, bro. Like <laughs> do us a favor, banker. yeah. And then he's got Goffle thrown to him. Mm-hmm. Uh, I it's mean, ugly. It, it's ugly out there in LA. Have we seen a demise like Jared Goff's? Like he went from the worst quarterback in his rookie year to the one of the best his soft neck last year or whatever, and then back to being horrible again this year. It's it's, I, it's I, ugly I out there in LA. It, what is it? Play calling? Is it? It's not personnel. I mean, I think, I think it's the offensive line too. To be honest, well, I think that was a big piece. Completely different. They're awful. Yeah. They're just so banged up. Yeah, I don't think people really read into that into that whole situation enough. I mean, myself included. I didn't think I knew it was going to be a little bit of a hit, and we had been staying away from Gurley, but just the whole offense is just not working right now. It's pretty ugly to watch. So oh, Blaney Walker ends up on the IR. I mean, not surprised whatsoever. Um, that I mean, I want to say that opens things up for Jonah Smith, who's been like a favorite of a lot of fantasy people. But Jonah Smith has, I mean, he's been close to a full time player for the last you know X number of weeks, and. He hasn't done anything. He had the one week, six for 78 and a touchdown back in week eight against Tampa Bay. But since then, it's 3.3 points, five points, 0.4 points last week. I mean, you didn't even get a single. I don't think they put up 40. Rock was played in like a month. Yeah, they, they, they put up 42 points last week in Jacksonville. Jonathan Smith didn't get a single target. So that, that about tells you how confident you should be in, in streaming him despite his athleticism. Again, Eric Ebron is down. So that makes Jack, Jack Doyle a very good waiver wire pickup. Um, David and Joku still not active. I mean, what are they waiting for? Like, what? It's a wrist. What? What are they doing? I don't know if it, I don't. I don't know. Maybe it just doesn't feel right. Maybe it was a complicated fracture, and they're just it didn't heal like we wanted to. I'm surprised. It's been a while. It's been like ten weeks, or, or whatever, season. like eight yeah. weeks. Like it's been a long time. So I don't know. It's something. Something's going on, and, and they're obviously okay. not clearing up. So until yeah. it gets cleared, I mean, I feel like the tight end position is such a hellhole. It is. It's just a shit show. And even I mean, like the good Hopkinson, guys are not reliable this year. Yeah, the good guys are not even that good. They're not that consistent. I mean, the only ones that were. This past week. Yep. Um, and then, I mean, TJ Hawkinson is up on the injury report, but, like, we don't even talk about him because he's not even close to relevant in redraft leagues no. right now. And we're so. playing tomorrow, and, and, and it's like – Yeah. I no. want him to be good, but he's not. He's just not. No, which is not happening this year. So, that's disappointing. But I, I want to say, I mean, unless you've gotten any – recent pop-ups randomly throughout the filming that that will conclude this week's injury episode. Anything else to add in there? No, I mean, good luck. Uh, happy Thanksgiving. I'm going to try to record our podcast uh, personally tonight to split, but things, a lot of things may change by Friday. Uh, as, as it's kind of a weird week. It's the only week of the year that you have three games in the middle of the week. But uh, no, it's, it, it's just kind of crunch time and there's so many guys injured. It's just like, I'm gonna briefly. I'm gonna briefly talk about this. That Kittle thing on Sunday kind of screwed up a lot of people. Schefter tweeting out that he had a broken ankle and that he was likely to play, but the, but the issue is there was no context. It was like, well, did he do it initially? Is he still dealing with it? And it, this is like a ten or eleven o'clock in the morning thing, and they're playing at eight o'clock at night. It's like the, people have to make decisions earlier in the day, like, and then we find out that it was a simple chip avulsion fracture. And obviously uh, he had a ridiculous game, mm-hmm. but sometimes that's the nature of these injury analysis and prediction is it's that there's no context. It's like, well, did he do it in week nine or did he do it in uh, last week in practice? It's like, wh- when did it happen? And uh, people are like, Oh, you got it wrong. I'm like, it, I don't have context. It's like me telling a patient like, yeah, you have an avulsion fracture, but I don't, I can't tell you when it happened, uh, how it happened. Uh, how the patient's feeling or nothing. You just have to figure it out. Huh? I mean, sometimes we get these things wrong. That's just what we were, we're, we're playing with half of the information and expecting me to get Yeah, give I mean, you it's not like you're, you're not there in the medical room with them. So, I mean, you can only do the best that you can based on the, the context that you're given. So it is what it is. And um, that will officially wrap up this week's injury report. Make sure you're following us on Twitter. Make sure you are subscribed to the Fancy Doctors YouTube channel as well. Because like you said, they do these kind of videos uh, throughout the week, a lot of individual injury injuries to players, too, as they happen in real time. So uh, very useful, very valuable. Make sure you smash that thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video. Make sure you subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you all next Thursday. Later, Doc.
What's up? Eckert's just added to the injury report with a hamstring. Fuck. <laughs> this freaking list is getting ridiculous. Fuck. I need him big time right now. I do. Every every guy is injured. Every guy is injured. Every list is ridiculous. Everybody's list. Just name all of your. Oh, <laughs>